This episode's FTR shoutout goes to Chloe K. Leave a comment down below to have a chance for a shoutout in the next episode. Make sure you're subscribed. What's up guys, it's your boy Chris and you're watching Fish for Thought. And welcome back to another episode of Fish Tank Review. Hi, I'm David from No Clean Aquariums, the company that makes cleaning fish tanks as easy as pouring a glass of water. Be sure to check out the clip below to see our latest improvements since originally filming this video. Say goodbye to that hassle and chore. All it takes is a very quick pour. Introducing Hot Bars Pro 2 Self Cleaning Fish Bowl. <laughs> pour clean water in and dirty water flows out. Really? It's the fastest, easiest, mess free, and fun way to have fish in your home or office. How do I what know? What about the dechlorinator? Because I am a fish. You and are. I love my beautiful new home. <laughs> is that what a fish sounds Let like? Let me tell you a little story. This is where I used to live. My sticks, huh? <laughs> <laughs> then my good friends Craig and David came oh. along and invented Whoa. the world's first self-cleaning aquarium. How long is this and thing? And it's not Holy just for cow. beta fish. It's great for small goldfish, oh, African small dwarf frogs, okay. and even ghost shrimp. Even it's ghost amazing. shrimp. I don't know how these guys do it. Okay, when it's time for a cleaning. No, 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 no. That's no, no, the no. old way. Practically wow. Practically cleans itself. Pretty magical. Gravity Flow 2 automatically stops when the job is done, ensuring no spills or messes. You can even recycle the dirty water to fertilize your plants. There is none of the old vet and you stay clean and dry. Wow. Gravity Flow 2 sets up in minutes. We stay and clean and dry. Up any space. There are and the glass is blown with pride in oh, the yeah. USA. Made in USA. If Let's do it, America. Thanks so much for watching. With your support, we'll continue inventing self-cleaning aquariums to help you and your aquatic friends live happy, asshole free lives. just staring. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, or get in touch anytime at NoCleanAquariums.com. Man, that last little advertisement by both of them, they both look real high. David looked like a super chill high, and David's friend, whatever the heck his name is, um, he looked like, you know, he was really out of it. Right, you know what I said in the beginning where this is actually sarcasm? Yeah, it is, but I can see how this may in fact help out the lazier fish keeper. What I don't agree with is this size of a fish bowl is good enough for a betta, definitely not a small goat fish. Maybe shrimp, yeah, sure. Well, it doesn't have to be ghost shrimp like they said. For some reason, they went from goatfish to even ghost shrimp. I guess they're trying to illustrate it can have anything in it, which no, it can't. I feel like they need to, the next version three, make an actual fish tank like that. But it's still not an excuse to bypass all the research in this hobby and just, you know, not care about the psycho, not care about why we do water changes. Let me just skip over a few things, especially the decorations they used. And again, the suggestion that tiny goldfish can, or small goldfish can be kept in this fish bowl. No, it can't. This fish tank is sent in by Jamie Martinez. Whoa, this is a looker. It's got that wild, untamed look. And what I really like about this, it's it's got a school of either pencil fish or is that mountain minnow or black neon. I can't really tell. I'm gonna go with pencil fish and a centerpiece beta. Now, it's also a long tank. The tank specs and the stocking options don't go any more better than this. I love it. Got some almond leaves. It's got that natural like brown look to it. And then it's got all these plants floating up top. There's frog bit. There's some hydrocado in the picture. Valisneria giving off shoots. Amazon sword, Marimo moss ball. Love the hardscape. This is a nice, nice tank. You can just tell that these plants are taking care of whatever little nitrogen that the fish are producing. Nutrient rich substrate. Ooh, there's a little Anubius nana and some tiger lotus. Wow, this is deceptively like, just you see more and more plants as you look at it. 4.8 out of five, very strong start. Oof, the caption to this picture is, it's understocked. I like your sarcasm. Very like-minded there. Hmm? Yeah, hopefully this is just a holding container, um, not the permanent home. This this can't be 
just a permanent enclosure for all these fish. No way. At least I hope not. Let's cross our fingers. Just saved this betta fish from a Kijiji ad a few hours ago. Surprisingly, the fish is very healthy and active. Okay, there's too much to read. TLDR saved a fish. But the real question I have is, I don't see the fish. Where is the fish? I, I don't see a fish, my dude. No matter how hard I look, I don't... <laughs> not saying you didn't save a fish. I'm just saying... I don't see it. <laughs> Whoa, Austin Bearer sent in this beautiful tank. Of course, the first thing I wonder is, is that plant in the back real? It might be an artificial plant. If it is, what's it doing in there? Take it out. Also not a big fan of like the artificial decor they sell you at the big chain pet stores, like those hides over there. You can try swapping it out for real wood, real rocks. There's so much to choose from. But having said that, this is quite a simple and nice tank. Your bed, it looks so colorful. The stocking is very low. I don't see any contradicting stocking options with the betta. Very roomy, a lot of live plants, and they're gonna fill up the tank real well, given a few months. I think you can fill up the back a little more with plants. I think you can even make a carpet in the front. Other than that, you're off to a really good start. 4.5 out of five, good job. The white elephant gift had me searching. I guess it's a popular gift. It pisses me off. You all are right, it would would never be okay to give a dog or cat to give a dog or cat in the death i know what you're trying to say but just work on your grammar next time fish and chips huh great idea i don't know what this white elephant thing is but it can go to hell for suggesting this crap okay at first i was looking at this um you know just like three bettas in three tragically small enclosures. I'm not even shocked at this point. I've done like, what, 30, 31 episodes, 32 episodes of these, and I see it all the time. Small tanks for bettas, we get it. Bettas are just the most abused pet. And then I look at the one to the right, <laughs> and there's like glowfish, there's neon tetras, and there might even be another betta in there. <laughs> Get out of here. Steve Angel sent in this tank. Right off the bat, I kind of know what kind of plant that is. It's one of those like plants from AliExpress where it's like $1 for this pack of like 500 seeds. Now Steve, update me on this tank a few months later because I don't know if these plants actually last a long time or are like legit underwater plants. Let me know. Other than that, I mean, if the plants are legit, uh, it's a really nice carpet and you have Anubius attachments, you got some Java fern going, pretty nice, dude. I would recommend some more hardscape to fill out the back, maybe taller plants also help fill out the back. That red light is very alarming. It's like I'm about to fight a final boss or something. Pretty nice betta. You can fill up your water all the way up. You don't have to worry about the betta jumping, you have a lid. So yeah, a bit unsure about this tank, but uh, I mean, the bed is in a proper enclosure. There's a filter. The tank is not too big, not too small. 4.2 out of five for now. We'll see how that goes. Spotted on AliExpress. I mean, what the heck is that thing? It looks like some gross, like bodily fluids coming out of, you know, the Pokemon muck. That's all I can think of. It's not aesthetic at all. And we don't even have to go over what the hell is wrong with the stocking options. Goldfish again, goldfish not goat fish. I have no words. Loco Craigslist sale. Neither do I. Neither do I. This tank is ended by at BG underscore aquariums. Check them out on Instagram. Now, you've heard me hate on all the stupid fish tanks with the stupid SpongeBob decor, but this is different and I'll tell you why. First of all, there's clearly more effort put into this. All three of their houses are there and it's in the, in the same, in the actual order of the show, the pineapple, the uh, Easter egg, or the, <laughs> the Easter head, and the rock. Secondly, although I don't think the plants are live, maybe the Elodia, if that is Elodia, or that might also be Amazon sword over there. They're trying to make this tank look kind of natural with live plants. The size of the tank is also big enough for the stocking options. Now I can't really tell what kind of fish are in there except a betta, but it's got way more than enough room. So despite this being a SpongeBob fish tank, it's done way better than all the rest. 3.5 out of five. So sad that when you search betta tank, all you find is this. Oh, oof. Oh, yikes. How to take care of a betta fish? Okay, number one, take it out of that thing. That's 
That's the first step to how to care for a betta fish. Hey, there's the self-cleaning glass betta fish. Doesn't look anything like the one we saw in the video. Hopefully it's uh Hopefully they got that patented, you know what I'm saying? And we're back to awful, disgusting, wait a second. Okay, <laughs> the SpongeBob thing distracted me from the fact that this is a beta sorority tank. Look at their fins. Wait, no, that's a male. There might be even more males than that one. They might all be males. They've just been attacking each other's fins and destroying their each other's fins in fights. Oh, this is awful. This is negative two quadrillion out of nothing. Gives me a headache. How do you neglect a tank for that long? Look at the water lines. That's next level, that's ridiculous. That must be like two years worth of no water changes. Especially if the tank has a lid too. I mean, water evaporates, but not that fast, especially indoors. <laughs> Goodness, and from the preview pictures down below, it looks like it's an Oscar. Might be a big enough tank, but not enough water. Probably dying from ammonia burn. Just hang in there. You may or may not know, right now I am in Japan. I'm not literally like in Japan here because this is my room, I'm in Canada. But by the time you're seeing this video, I will be in Japan. This week I got a very special guest for you guys. It's my sister. She's gonna be hosting FTR. Now keep in mind she is only eight. Keep the comments appropriate and also hit that like, show her some love. Let's get it. Hi, I'm your host Natalie for Fish for Thought and we're doing Fish Tank with you. Um, as Fish Tank is very Strange. I don't really expect a fish to live in there for so long. It doesn't really look like it's big enough for the fish. Maybe it, like something like a three, probably a two. Like it looks like a fairy tale. It looks like really colorful. I mean, it's not bad or anything. It just kind of needs a bit of a change. Out of five, I would rate this. Um, uh, four. 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 Um, this fish tank is sent by Aiden Jones. Um, it doesn't look that bad. Uh, the tank, uh, kind of looks old and the water is kind of like, I don't know, it's kind of dirty. I like how, um, it's lots of room for the fish and there's lots of like places it fish can explore and there's lots of plants I will give this a four out of five this fish tank um, is also kind of small it's really like weird I like the design though it's very like colorful and like well it's not really bad though so maybe three out of five this fish tank was sent by Demetrius um, it looks like it's filled with lots of plants. It's pretty good. It's clean and the tank doesn't look so old. I'll give this one a uh, 4 out of 5. This snack is called Monster Meal. My friend introduced it to me. It tastes pretty good. The seasoning. This fish tank is sent by Joseph Timms. Um, it has lots of plants. It looks like a good fish tank for it. The fish is very big and the water is clean and the tank is clean. And I will give this one a 5 out of 5. Very odd looking. It's like made out of glass and it's a sink. I don't know if the fish are okay in there like if somebody turns on the tap would the water go to the fish or go somewhere else because it doesn't very early look so safe for the fish i would give this um three out of five this fish tank isn't very good because it isn't in a proper tank and it really isn't enough space for the fish and the fish is looking like it needs more space than that. I'll give this a one out of five. Uh, this fish tank was sent 
by Land in White doesn't really look very bad. It looks pretty good and the tank is clean. There's lots of leaves and plants. Uh, I'll give this one a 5 out of 5. This fish tank was sent by Matthew Oswald. It's really good looking. 5 out of 5. It's Garfield. It's in like this Garfield tank. The tank is super dirty and I would give this a 1 out of 5. This fish tank looks really good. It doesn't look so bad. Um, 4 out of 5. It's fairly small, but it looks clean inside, but it's not enough space for the fish. Um, I would give this one 2 out of 5. This fish tank was sent by Tyler Mays. It's not really um, a bad fish tank. Um, there's lots of space. There's not really that many plants in it. Um, four out of five. This fish tank doesn't look like it's in good shape. The water's really green and it looks like it needs a water change and I can't see the fish or any of the other things. You can only see the tank and the green water. One out of five. Mm, I wouldn't really buy that for $35 at all. $35, I'd probably save it. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you liked the video, please give it a like and subscribe. Don't forget to get your hands wet. Hey guys, I am still on my Japan slash Korea trip. This week I've got another guest star for you, my good friend Darren. He's going to be hosting this week's FTR. Definitely show him some love. Like squad, let's reach 1,000 likes. Where's Chris? Who is this guy? Where's Chris? Where's Chris? Well, my name is Darren and you're watching Fish Tank Review. Oh shoot, no, he's still alive. What the? Ew. Chris is actually fine, uh, he's just in Japan on vacation, so uh, he asked me to do a fish tank review video. I don't know that much about fish. This tank is broken uh, from my parents a while back, very unfortunate, but yeah, so this is gonna go really well. Our first tank is an office tank with seven goldfish and three turtles. Um, someone needs to tell them that this fi fish tank is overstocked. I've watched enough Fish for Thought videos to know that this is too many fish. This is not enough room. This is basically overpopulation. Well, speaking of overpopulation, poor, poor goldfish. This is at a random food place we're visiting. Well, I've actually seen a lot of these. Um, every time we go to a restaurant, we always tell Chris to rate the fish tanks at the entrances. Yeah, they don't tend to be any good. They're always a zero. So, this one is no exception. So many fish in there. I don't even know what's going on. It looks dirty, crowded, those fish are not gonna last that long in those conditions, unfortunately. This is a zero out of five. Wow, so I'm pretty sure a McDonald's cup is just for McDonald's. Whoever thought this was a good idea, I don't really know what to say. I'm not surprised that this happened. I hope this isn't a joke and this is like an honest mistake, but like, I don't know what they were thinking. A fish needs to go in a tank. This is a no. Nine-year-old cousin's fish says he doesn't have the water pump or the filter on because the noise bothers him. About four fish dead already. His mother doesn't care despite me begging her to just Google how to care for, a, for goldfish. Wow. So, well, I hope they explain to the nine-year-old cousin that those things are necessary. Yeah, education is important, even about your hobby. It's just facts. These fish are probably just as happy as that last tank. I hope that mom eventually comes around. This is not gonna last long, it's too bad. Okay, for some real tanks. So this one was submitted by Festino Z. Um, it has guppies, endlers, two endlers, and neon tetras. Ooh, so, I don't know how many guppies, um, but this tank looks amazing. The rocks are super cool. There's not that many plants, so I guess Chris might say like, oh, there should be like some nice, maybe more plants in the back. 
as a recommendation i don't know you tell me in the description i mean not in the comments in the comments <laughs> i don't know i don't know what i'm doing but this is amazing i think 4.5 out of 5 because it's super good next a uh, tank sent by a grade aquatics well this tank seems to be probably their first tank has a little few two plants there a little house i don't know if that fits but it looks cute it's a bit empty i think it's a good start probably hopefully you're gonna add more but has so much potential i think it looks like it's a big enough tank 2.5 <laughs> the next one is from jacob e jacob e Ooh, this is so nice it's a new 9 gallon fluval flex with celestial pearl danios and cherry shrimp and planning to get more. This looks super cool. This looks like it's from the ocean. There's some stuff on the bottom, some plants on the bottom, some plants on the back. The fish are super small and it doesn't look crowded. This looks really good. This is probably 4.5 out of five our last tank is actually from gordon f it looks really cool i don't know what this kind of biome this is supposed to like uh replicate but it looks really nice the branches in the back are creating a lot of depth um the rocks on the sides are really cool it looks like like a little like community um and he oh and he sent pictures of his fish oh so cute i don't even think i need to say anything i'll just let the music play so i hope you liked this shorter version of fish tank review i hope i didn't do horrible bye and welcome back to another fish tank review View. Due to a medical emergency, I had to leave my aquarium for one and a half months with no power or any maintenance. This is the sadness that I have to return to. That is really darn sad. I mean, you had a really, really good tank going on. That marvelous carpet, those textures of plants in the back, that is a really nice planted tank. It's probably got some CO2 injection in there as well. Very understocked. That's like the perfect 10 out of 10 tank for me. But unfortunately, I don't know what that medical emergency was, but unfortunately you didn't have anyone to take care of your tank for you. And that's yeah that's really sad because even when I went away for two weeks my mom was still taking care of my fish tanks so I'm very lucky in that way so I didn't have to come home to something like that I mean there is one guppy in there that survived but probably not doing so well either haven't eaten in a while probably and because of the absence there were no lights because no power and the only plant that might survive this whole ordeal is that sword in the corner there the wonderful carpet is gone that is heartbreaking that is one of like the nightmares for a aquarist or fish keeper so if you have your stuff together again and you've recovered hey want to pay 65 dollars to torture beta fish aquamid pyramid beta fish aquarium new 65 dollars i like that caption though they called out the beta just like i would call out the beta that looks like a tent uh, made for like an ant colony or something i don't know definitely doesn't look like a fish tank to me i don't know if if you show anyone this that the first thing they'll be like is oh look a fish tank also what the hell is that in the back just just what is that <laughs> my sister would probably save that 65 dollars to use it for something else <laughs> nice could add four more blue whales <laughs> Okay, you guys, <laughs> that's my sarcasm. Give it back. <laughs> that cracks me up. <laughs> Could, <use more> f <laughs> Could add four more blue whales. I love it. So sassy, man. You got this. <laughs> Doing my job. I don't, uh, no comment. No comment. Just, that's it. That's funny enough. Ashley and Maiko Cassidy sent in this uh, Malawi cichlid assorted tank. I don't know that much about Malawi cichlids. Um, I do know that you can't put live plants in the tank because it'll just tear it up. But having said that, I think those are plastic plants. However, they are mimicking natural plants. They're green, they have natural plant textures. They definitely are a step above the violet, purple, neon glowing plants. I enjoy the hardscape as well. This is reminiscent of a typical Malawi cichlid tank. And to my understanding, it's kind of getting enough cichlids so that the aggression is spread out and not 
concentrate it in a few fish. It's kind of like playing around with the ratios. I think you have the ratios down. None of the fish look like they're in great distress. So yeah, this is a Malawi cichlid tank done right. Gonna give it a 3.8 out of 5. Good job. This fish tank is sent in my Cody plant, which if that's your real last name, hey man, that's really cool. And you're doing it justice. Look at how many plants are in this tank and you've kind of just let it go all wild and growing anywhere it wants. You got some classic plants in there like Vallis, Anubias, Hydrocado, I think that is. You got some moss and some glass jars, although not the biggest fan of glass jars. It doesn't look that, that bad. It kind of looks like a wild plant grow out tank. I would say it needs a bit more structure. Um, and again, the glass is not my cup of tea. So I'm giving this a four out of five. This next fish tank is sent in by M. Terrain. Looks like they've got some breeding action going on. And yes, those are mollies and guppies. So the breeder box is probably full of little fry right now. There's some white skirt tetras in here as well. Got the live plants splayed out across the tank. Uh, wait for it to fill out. It'll look even better. Got a fake wood piece and a fake little bridge there. Not best in my opinion, but still going after something that is reminiscent of nature or something that's not completely and totally artificial. 3.9 out of 5 for now. Good job. Oh dear. Oh dear indeed. Where do I start with this one? That, I mean, that actually looks like an okay tank. It's got a hardscape centered and then it's got white substrate, which is nice. It shows off colors. And then it's got this clump of Anubius uh, Barteri, maybe Anubius Nana, which is perfectly fine. It, that's live plant right there. It's like a centerpiece kind of plant. I really enjoy it. But then you've got, you gotta have a blue lobster on there with a betta. I feel like you need to choose either or, even in a bigger tank. And I'm sure this tank is definitely not that big. And you can already see that the betta's fins are torn. That is probably because either the betta's been fighting the blue lobster and the blue lobster has been catching them, or it's just from, you know, sleeping at night. The betta goes down to the bottom to rest. And that's when the blue lobster like to scavenge around and look for food. <laughs> and that's probably also when it will catch the betta, you know, resting. This is a poor little betta here. Very beautiful too. It definitely needs to be alone. This is bad. Never do this. This fish tank is from Malachia from Italy. Hello, Italy. Would love to go someday. Very wary of your pit pocket people everywhere, but still worth it for me. Still wanna go. Maybe it'll be my next trip, who knows. I enjoy this scape a lot. It's got some depth in it. It's got that uh, driftwood in the back with that Anubia sticking out. That's a nice technique you got. You got forefront Java fern, forefront, I think that's a little, maybe a little bit of Java fern too. And then um, Java fern in the back and more Anubias in the back. So pretty easy plants. You got some floaters up top to create some additional texture dropping down, and a marvelous betta. The light is a bit overexposed, but hey, not everyone's a photographer, okay? I even accept the clay pot because it's kind of laid out in a nice uh, orientation. It's got a hole in it, looks kind of old. Looks like you could find this in nature if there's like a tribe living in the river. They might have dropped their clay pot in the river and it shattered. So really, this doesn't speak artificial to me at all. Got a nutritious substrate probably fluval stratum, something like that. I'm giving this a 4.3 out of 5. Really good job. Next tank, we have MD.Arifer Ramen Tushar. Sorry if I butchered that. I tried. Your tank is very interesting. This is a different take on a fish tank. And I love that there's an aspect where it comes out of the tank. It makes it just that much more natural. That's actually what I want to do with this tank over here. And there is a little piece of branch coming out of the water, but you can't really see it ever because it's blocked by the light. But anyways, I like the use of the pothos plant. I think that's what it is. Uh, really easy to grow and can be submerged, can be immersed. That's what's happening here. The roots are submerged and it's immersing up, growing up and using or climbing up the hardscape. Very, very smart move. Got some Elodia in there, got an almond leaf. Got some Amazonia frog bit. I love it. These are all really simple plants used in a very creative way. And it's also a clean, but somehow also messy look. This is a 4.6 out of 5 in my books. Good job. The way her face is magnified. <laughs> the heck is this? Um, it's like, uh, I review fish tanks here. This don't look like a fish tank to me. Thank you, next. This also doesn't, shouldn't be a fish tank, but 
$35 for a gallon, ideal for your betta, at least there's a filter I guess. Wait a second, that's not even a betta. So you're saying that it's ideal for a betta, but you can also put a dwarf or flame garami in there? I think not. One gallon, ideal. Next fish tank is sent in by the fish rack. I don't know if that's their YouTube or Instagram, but whichever the case, go check them out. Big lovely tank, wooden finish, very nice. Light substrate, got the big swords in the back, got two stumps um, on either side and centralized bit of uh, hardscape in the form of rocks. Very understocked, you got guppies and I see opaline garami, a centerpiece fish. It's very understocked, so for a big tank. Very enjoyable to look at. I do kind of feel like I want more plants in this tank. Hopefully you're still trying to spread the plants out, grow them more throughout the tank. Maybe some more prominent hardscape in the front as well. Just seems a little bit empty. Or if you can fill that emptiness with, you know, a few schools of bottom feeders like Corydoras, that would be great. For now, four out of five. Good job. Friends talked me into getting a betta spontaneously a couple years ago. Swim in peace. Oh, and that kind of reminds me of Phoenix, which was my recently deceased fish. Swim in peace as well. Two years is a long time. Any one day of those two years and you could have done enough research to know exactly how to take care of this beautiful little female betta. But again, there's a lot of people who get bettas and they don't survive for more than two days or two months. The lesson here is don't give in to peer pressure. <laughs> Something's wrong, but I can't quite put my finger on it. <laughs> You don't say. First ever bubble ball aquarium. Fish inside. Like that's supposed to be a good thing. Oh, it's from Barb's Buzzin. Now, uh, truth be told, I haven't seen any. I haven't checked out any channels like Barb's Buzzin or Paco Faro or uh, that other fish torture <laughs> channel. I've only seen it on the subreddits. Um, like I've only seen people post about them in the subreddits. Like what's the next horrible thing they've been doing? Partly because I don't want to get more depressed by them, and also because I do, uh, I, I have seen you guys recommend me to do some breakdown on their channel or review their channel, and I haven't gone to that yet, but I want my reaction to be like first time reaction, so it's genuine, so I don't want to check them out beforehand. And if you guys really want me to, uh, you know, review them quicker, sooner, then please let me know in the comments. I'll try to prioritize that if I see a lot of you that want that. No promises though, I do have a lot of other things that I want to post. A lot of more exciting videos. But anyways, yeah, just let me know. This person is just stressing out the fish by just stomping around. This person really thinks this is an okay thing to do, just to stress out the fish. It just exists to be entertainment however you want. The scary part is, why? Look at that like to dislike ratio. That's crazy. Only 136 people disliked it from the 74K that saw this. Why am I suddenly feeling like I'm being ridiculous pointing this out? I shouldn't feel like I'm in the wrong. It shouldn't be like, wait, you haven't put fish in a bubble ball and stomped all over them yet? What kind of human being are you? Do that. Go get a bubble ball, whatever that is, tomorrow and put fish in there. You're so inhumane that you haven't treated fish this way yet. Like how, how weird does that sound? That's how I feel right now with this like and dislike ratio on this video. It's like we're the minority, the ones that actually care about living things. Wheel underscore master underscore three, four, five cent in this tank. It's got some big river rocks. I've done a similar scape to this, if you guys remember. I think it's been a year since that scape. It was really fun to work with larger substrates. It's very different from having to uh, manage the very fine, thin, uh, sandy, loamy, silty substrate. I had a blast aquascaping that tank, but this does remind me of that tank. It's understocked. It's got some typical river uh, scape plants, plants that look like valids, plants that are more simple like the moss. The scape is also quite simple, it's nice. The only thing is I feel like maybe it shouldn't be under direct sunlight because then you don't have full control of what you can do with the tank or algae. But seeing how there isn't a massive algae bloom here, they must know kind of what they're doing at least. 4.5 out of 5, good job. The first two days of owning goldfish, oh no. Well, and there's that Spongebob house. Of course, but here's the good news. The same person who posted that picture posted this and said, T after two days, I informed myself a lot and updated my tank. I think that says, I suppose say tank to a 100 gallon tank and a good filter for them. Congrats, Sylph97, you're doing it right. 
I mean, you figured out that you're doing something wrong and you corrected it. And imagine 100 gallons for those two goldfish. They're living it up in a huge palace. That is way beyond what you are required to provide them. Good on you, man. That's five out of five behavior right there. Fish tank review, nice. Okay, well, you know what? Those are probably the chonkiest, I was gonna say carp, but I feel like even for just fish in general, I've never seen such chunky fish in my life. They look healthy, they're really fat. So hopefully this is some kind of, you know, very temporary thing, temporary tank, and that they actually live in a big pond. That's what I'm gonna be inclined to think to make myself feel better. I like what's on top of the tank. It's like some leafy greens. They might actually even be real. It's kind of like an aquaponics thing going on. I love aquaponics stuff. But then you look on the bottom and you see these chunky ass carp, man. They definitely do not belong in that, what looks like a 30 gallon tank for five of the fattest fish I've ever seen in my life. Sad face. Welcome our newest commuter assistant, Honeydew. More like honey dye. You can just tell this is literally just being set up. The tank's got that typical little misty sort of fog going on. That's the new tank syndrome bacteria colonies. It means the tank is very new and hasn't even been cycled properly yet. And how can this tank be cycled if it probably has no filter. I don't know what's on the bottom of that tank because I can't see the substrate. Hopefully there is substrate because that's also surface area that can provide a space for beneficial bacteria. At this point in time, there shouldn't be anything wrong with the betta that we can see because I'm assuming they got the betta the same day and just put it in. When it's that fast, you don't really see any bad side effects or any repercussions of negligence. It's too early, but once the fish is dead, it's too late. SBU commuters, step your game up. Girl I went to high school with just posted this on her story. She got it two days ago. Poor Betta got stuck in a half gallon decor tank. Is you alive? How ratchet is this friend of yours? No, the fish is like, dear God, just kill me all this barf gravel. <sighs> this was Steve, my first Betta fish. Ooh, we're going Betta fish heavy this time. September 14, 2012 to March 2015. And since then, I have learned proper care of betta fish. Well, your betta still live for three years. That's, that's impressive. That's, yeah. I mean, betta fish are fighters. They will try to stay alive for as long as they can. And you probably got one with good genes. And I'm very proud of you for learning proper care of betta fish. Send me pics where it didn't happen though. I need pics. This fish tank is sent in by Alicia Zero Westfall of yet another betta fish. This betta looks so pretty. It looks like it's got a nice, white red dress on for the ball. There's a little backstory behind this betta. It was uh, being fin nipped in other tanks and wasn't doing so well, but now it's in a tank of its own and it's doing much better. I can see that there's even almond leaves, a four out of five. Tank at my school featuring four goldfish and one pleco. Am I blind or do I not see the pleco? At least it's not one of the giant common plecos, but I wanted to show this tank because of this very rare ornament that you don't see every day. It's it's Gary the snail. I mean, I see a lot of SpongeBob decorations, but very rarely do I see a Gary the snail. It's usually SpongeBob, Patrick, uh, SpongeBob's house, Patrick's house, Squidward's house that's over there. But Gary the snail is a very rare specimen indeed. Any FB ad and fish tank. <laughs> I see why you've put the. <laughs> that looks like some random tube that's used in like a science lab and then they just put some gravel on the bottom and called it a fish tank. You know, not everything that's made of glass and can contain water should be a fish tank. With only one easy payment of $100, you can have this fish tank. I wonder what kind of fish would fit in this. Chameleon24 sent in this little tank. Very simple scape. I think it's a no filter, no heater, no nothing. I do see a tube going down. It might be an air tube. I'm not sure exactly. Got a little betta in there. Got a little, looks like a nerite snail maybe. Looks like some nutritional substrate, probably fluval. Nice little rimless tank. Very clean look. Controlled by sunlight because it's beside a windowsill. I'd prefer not for that to happen. Um, is this a new tank? Because it doesn't have that much algae yet. 
when considering that it's being controlled by sunlight, which is really not the best way. It is a good way to grow algae though. The plants look nice, very nice selection. There's a lot of reds in there. In my opinion, could use a bit more hardscape. The hardscape right now is a little ambiguous. Has a lot of potential, but this is a good start. I'm giving it a four out of five. This distance tank in a Disney Plus YouTube ad. I always knew Disney Plus was no good, taking all the stuff from Netflix, so now we have to subscribe to a, a new thing. This is basically just like cable TV all over again. You gotta buy all these different channels. What's the difference? And this is unforgivable. Never thought I'd see the day where discus were put into a TV aquarium. <laughs> Someone in the comments did say that there's a possibility they were just in there for, you know, the filming of the ad and then put back into proper fish tanks which yeah hopeful thinking but i'm not sure disney really uh as a company considers the lives of tropical fish it seems a little out there even though little mermaid there's a lot of fish in there this tank is sent in by george calvar oh look another betta this is just like a betta themed ftr wow the colors are so nice are those the red root runners or whatever they're called i keep forgetting this reminds me of fall there's like a tree with leaves on top very cool effect and then it's greenery on the bottom which if it was all red on the bottom too that'd be a little too much red it's like the same combination as the last tank i reviewed uh betta fish and nere snail very nice. Gonna have to go with a 4.4 out of 5. Really good job. Pretty, but pretty damn horrible too, to say the least. <laughs> Savage, man. Oh yeah, that's, that's why. It's even got a filter. It's got water lettuce floating, so live plants. Nice. There's even a rooster on the filter. How did, how did that happen? I don't know, but they had to go ahead and put a goldfish in there. I'd probably even say guppies are okay if they're really young guppies like if you have a guppy breeding tank and you wanted to put some fish in this smaller aquarium put the young babies in here to grow out sure whatever or maybe shrimp maybe some snails nope every time every time they gotta put a goldfish this tank in my local pub that's too small for both fish again am i tripping out or do i only see one fish where's where's the other fish if you ask me this fish needs a drink here's the comments too small for even one fish, JFC. My pet cricket has a bigger tank. An effing cricket. Serious question. Did you just buy a feeder cricket and give it a good life? When a cricket has a bigger tank than a... This tank sent in by J Buck. Yo, cool name, bro. Pretty awesome looking aquarium. You got some big, big Anubias Bartiri. You got a big sword in the corner. Very interesting scape. Don't know if I agree with the orientation a whole lot because it seems like the scape is closing itself off and it's giving the impression that it's an enclosed sort of scape, not so much open to the front of the tank where the audience or the viewer can see. It's oriented in a way so that it feels like it's, it's got its back towards us. You might need to shift your hardscape around a little bit, although this does create a sort of natural effect. My favorite would have to be the giant Barteri pieces. They're really nice, nice and green and lush. Doesn't seem like there's an algae problem. Very light stocking. I think there's honey grammys in here. This is pretty cool. This is a cool tank. 4.5 out of 5. Good job. You can't see them crying because they are underwater. <laughs> That's true. How would you ever know if the fish is crying? Tears are made primarily out of water and they're surrounded by water so fish could be crying and we wouldn't know about it wow that's that's one heck of a shower thought right there i like how the owner is pumping oxygen into this tank like that's supposed to help overstocking your fish tank with big fish is not fixable by pumping in more oxygen they're not overstocked because they're gonna run out of oxygen Come on, people. It has barely anything to do with how much oxygen is in the tank. Joshua Lone sent in this wild looking tank, lately seasoned with stocking. Haven't seen a fish in here yet, probably no fish. Cool, I do enjoy the messy look. I'm not sure what all the tubes are doing running around the area. Kind of makes it look a little uh, less nice, a little more messy. Maybe get rid of the tubes. Also trim and tidy up some of the hygrophila if that's what the plant is. I like wild but super uncontained like very obviously not too maintained wild look is not for me. Still an overall pretty good tank 4.2 out of 5. Good job. Meet Axolotl the Tormented. Oh I'm no Axolotl keeper and I'm not 
100% sure I know what's wrong with this tank. I have a few guesses. You guys can tell me if I'm right or not. First thing, uh, there's no substrate, but that might not be a really big issue, but that's just the first thing I noticed. Second thing, um, it's very small. I think that's one of the main things uh, wrong with this tank. There's not much moving space, if at all any moving space on the bottom of the tank for the axolotl. I know that they like uh, their tanks horizontally inclined, so more space in the bottom to move. Third thing, um, I'm not sure if it's supposed to be with fish because those are Borneo or uh, Hillstream loaches, Borneo suckers. I don't like the fact that it's in with these guys. I've never really seen them coexisting with other bottom dwellers. And fourth, there are just too many things in here um, that's blocking its way. Again, maybe it's tied to the second point, but um, on, on not enough space to move. But yeah, it's just too many things piled on top of each other. But I do like that they're using live plants in here. It looks like it's a fish store, so it's probably on sale. Hopefully it's temporary and it gets a good home. Wonderful sticking trip. I think it's supposedly stocking choices have been made clearly. So that's uh, sarcasm for you guys who don't know. Now, again, not a saltwater expert, so I'm not entirely sure what's happening here, but I read into the comments and it says, is this a saltwater thing I'm too fresh to understand? <laughs> Same dude. <laughs> I'm too fresh to understand saltwater stuff. So I'm also questioning why it's it's on this subreddit. I'm pretty sure saltwater tanks need way lower stocking. Again, stocking is spelled wrong. The aquarium above could fit two clowns at Masat. Tanks need minimum 100 gallons as they are super active swimmers. I'm just gonna take their word for it. And that's why this tank is in a bad spot. Taha Ibrahimi sent in this tank. Boy, you guys have such Challenging names, man. I'm just working on my pronunciation here. <laughs> Cute little white clown mountain minnow. Still can't believe white clouds are banned in my country. I can't get them ever. Maybe they'll lift the ban soon, I don't know. Nice little simple aquascape. Very good start. I like the moss. I like that you tie down the wood with a rock. That's exactly how I would do it. Got some red ram's horns in there. Very good start. 3.8 out of 5. Would love to see what you do with it. My school's aquarium. Insert eye roll here. Was that, was that a good eye roll? I mean, one good thing about this aquarium is that it's understocked. Hey, if there's no fish in your aquarium, it doesn't matter how bad it looks. You're not hurting nothing. We're watching fish tank room. We're going to the pet store. Not exactly sure what fish we're getting just yet, but we're gonna get some new fish. We could probably put a beta fish in here. We are going to get every single one of these guys. We're getting fish for this aquarium. <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll get all these. An African cichlid tank, flower horn tank. The 90 gallon. Here is Luna's aquarium. Oh, wait, no, we have beta fish over there. There is tons of comments saying this tank right here is actually too small for the beta fish. On, we, on to the next two ponds and then another full pond. Oh, there's one. This one's a little, I don't know what happened to him. They're both like half alive and like half. Oh, that one's so many. Oh, 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 oh. Yay! Found on eBay, shake my head. Oh man. Ooh. Oh no, 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 no. Absolutely no redeeming factor here. Some people like to say like, oh, they're only in a bowl for the camera and then they'll be put back to the tank. You'd be surprised how much damage these female bettas can do just being left in a bowl for a little bit of time. At this point, we should be wishing that it was photoshopped and I really don't think it's photoshopped. That is at least 10 female bettas in a sorority. I've heard people not do sorority tanks right, but this is like by far exceeding all everything that's happened before. Found on eBay, so they're trying to sell this tank to some poor soul who doesn't know that this is wrong. This is the worst tank that I have seen in a while. That female up top is like, yep, I've seen things. I've seen a lot of things. The larger tank from the place I'm pet sitting. It's got one fish inside of it. This tank is pretty interesting. It's almost like a mirror. I can see exactly everything that's being reflected. I think it's because it doesn't have a light and it's also very dark from the algae. Tank is really dark and the surrounding areas are brighter. It tends to just reflect everything. Oh, and this is the one fish that was in there. This is some cichlid of some species and it looks like bone dry. It looks like it hasn't had a meal in like three weeks, maybe more. It's definitely neglected. 
Maybe it even has worms. Wonder what the owners are doing. This fish tank is sent in by Bianca Gonzalez, showcasing a nice and green and well done betta tank. Love the wide open space for the betta to swim. Love that it's got live plants all throughout. No fake plants to be seen. I love that there's no powerful flow because bettas don't really like it when there's a lot of flow in the tank. Kind of tires them out. What I do want more of is some sort of hardscape, maybe some rocks, but I would recommend a nice wood feature with some interesting lines. And then you can even plant in and around that wood piece. And here's Bianca's little betta, Prometheus. Cool name. Very scary movie. I don't... I always get really scared by those kind of movies. This Prometheus is pretty cute. It's like yawning or something. Maybe it's hungry. Keep it up. 4.2 out of 5 for now. Good job. $50 for this. Fishbowl. Aquarium starter kit. $50. Hey, when they label it an aquarium starter kit, like... Are you sure? Is it an aquarium if it's a fishbowl? Also, let's just talk about that price. $50? You are kidding me. If you gave me $50, I, I would definitely get more done than just get a fishbowl with some fish food and some plastic decorations. This is like a scam for new fish keepers. This is like some lazy parent who wants to save money, think they're smart in getting this starter kit on Craigslist, whatever, instead of doing their research and just outright get scammed, bro. 50 bucks, I hope nobody gets that. I don't know what's worse, the stocking, the price for the fact that it's supposedly 800 gallons. Ooh, those are some big paku. Carrot cichlids in there for sure. Honestly, if they took away the super big fish, because even if it is 800 gallons, it does not look like it's enough to pack in those paku. Who knows, they're probably not maxed out in size. And then there's the price, the outrageous price tag. $3,500. Dude, Chad, bro, you're the real Chad. Who in their right mind is gonna get it? Someone who's hardcore about keeping monster fish isn't gonna fall for that. Someone who's not hardcore isn't gonna spend a whopping 3,500 bucks. Good luck, man. Your demographics do not match. Brandon McGraw sent in this tank. Very interesting scape straight off the bat. You've surrounded your centerpiece ornament thing with a corkscrew valve. And then the centerpiece wood feature is kind of odd to me. It looks kind of like a hut made out of chola wood, cholia. I don't, I'm just gonna call it chola. I think it's not correct, but whatever, I'm not. That guppy up there looks a bit like it's struggling a little. It could be developing some back problems, but I do like that it's understocked. Not seen chola wood utilized this way, so that is kind of cool as well. Yeah, overall not bad. I would just suggest maybe looking into a different sort of wood feature. I always like to get like one or two big pieces of wood, play around with it, try to go for like manzanita or spider wood. For now, I'll give it a four out of five. Good job. This is a literally a aquarium. Just why? I see what you did there. Yeah, I've seen these in the past before. In the comments though, I found that these fish tanks actually don't have any fish in it and it also does flush. So you, you can see the water going down when you flush and rising back up. And it's just basically ornamental, so it's not really containing any live uh, animals. Which is, I mean, technically that's fine in my books. It also doesn't have live plants in it because it's all plastic. The fact that it doesn't have any fish places it on top of like every single bat tank we've reviewed so far. And one of these comments said how to do a water change the easy way. <laughs> This tank is sent in by Charlie T. Seems like an assorted garami tank. You got a gold garami, you got a dwarf garami, and in the back there that might be a croaking or sparkling garami. Due to the angle of this tank, I can't really judge it the way I want to. From what I can see from this angle, it looks like a mighty fine tank. The back is covered by green plants, the top got floating plants, nice robust wood pieces as a hardscape, Nubius Nana on some of the wood. Not sure what that lava rock is doing, right in the front there is kind of distracting from the scape, but overall I can tell that this is not a bad scape at all. Because of the angle, I can't really go all in and judge it 100%. 4.3 out of 5 though, good job. Okay, really bad small tanks everywhere. Oh, oh that's why he's asking, are you kidding me? 
Oh man, that's... Let's get an F train down this comment section below, RIP in peace. I mean, yes, this place was filled with little tiny bases as fish tanks when that should never be the case. Also, maybe less well known, especially to people who would put betta fish into small containers, is that betta fish really love to just jump out of the water. They can jump really, really high for a fish. And what most people usually do with a uh, fish tank that doesn't have a lid is that they try to stock the fish tank with floating plants like a bunch of duckweed or some frog bits and that really inhibits the fish from jumping. I've not had any problems or heard anyone have problems with an open uh, surface uh, fish tank that had floating plants on it. So a tip for you guys, a pro tip, always put floating plants on top of fish tanks with no lids if you got fish that will jump and betta fish are one of them. So are zebra daniels, guppies are also known to jump, shrimp. I've lost a few guppies and shrimp to jumping. Sad face. Georgia Brondell sent in this little creature named Toast. What a cute name and what a cute little guy. Looking very adventurous, healthy, alert, and playful. And this is the tank that it's kept in. It's pretty well aquascaped for a uh, axolotl tank. I know there's a lot of limitations, like not being able to have actual substrate. As you can see that she really made an effort to aquascape this very nicely for him. There's real wood in there, leaching tannins that are very healthy for aquatic life in general. A lot of marimo moss balls and anubias, and elodia, and I saw some hornwort, and there's also pothos in the filter, taking all the nitrates and ammonia out of the water. A lot of room for the axolotl to actually swim around and walk around. I'm not going to rate this as a fish tank, I'm going to rate it as a uh, axolotl tank. And for an axolotl tank, this is a nice 4.8. Good job. My friend's 5 gallon betta tank. Oh, jeez. I, I feel like I can smell it from here, like through the screen. That's how bad it looks. What do you have to do to make sure that it gets to this point? I feel like even if I did nothing, these tanks would not start looking like that. I guess the only thing is, they just left the lights on 24-7 forever, so never turn it off. That would do it for sure. So if you guys see this as a potential tank that you want to have, all you have to do is this one little trick. Keep your lights on forever and you'll be there soon. On the other hand, if you never want your tank to look like this, get a timer, set it to 8 hours and you're good. Best of both worlds, just give you the answer to everything. This is by far one of the worst aquarium I have ever seen, and yes, that is a red tail catfish in the pleco. And that red tail is not done growing, it's gonna be massive. That tank is way too small, very plain as well, but I guess if you have a big catfish, like Pat, you wouldn't want to put anything else, except there's a pleco. The pleco looks extra droopy. I wouldn't be surprised if that catfish has tried to eat the pleco before. Probably fit the whole body in its mouth and then realized it's plated, so it just barfed it up. I can totally see that happening because these catfish, they just scour the bottom of whatever and just look for morsels of food to fit in their mouth. And when it like, when the whiskers touch a pleco, might be some food. So it just turns around and chomp. And that's really not healthy for the pleco and the catfish itself can get hurt as well. Time for an upgrade. This tank is sent in by John Jarvis. Really nice to look at. It's got some attitude, it's got some personality. The little totem with the live plants coming out of its eyes. That mug is really out of place in my opinion, but it does add some personality. It's, it's speaking things. Yeah, not conventionally something I would like, but I'm gonna rate it a 4.2 out of 5. Keep it up and just enjoy what you're doing. It looks like you really are enjoying it. This is Kyra Silverthorn's tank. Two big pieces of Anubias. I think that these pieces of Anubias are fake. If they're not fake, please take them out of the substrate because their uh, roots are gonna rot. You never want to plant the, the rhizome. You want to leave the rhizome on top and then the little roots coming out of the rhizome will plant itself into the substrate. But anyways, I think these are fake plants that resemble Anubias, which isn't the worst thing in the world. But again, be careful and make sure there's silk because I've heard a lot of incidents where fake plants have cut open fish before. 
What's really interesting about this skate for me is that I've never seen a substrate that's shaped like that before. It looks very neat and I feel like it could work for some aquascapes. In general, this tank is quite clean. It's uh, not the worst I've seen for betta fish, not at all, not even close. The betta fish's name is Veloxis pretty cool name. But anyways, I always encourage uh, natural live plants. It's better for your fish for a multitude of reasons and it's also very entertaining as a hobby. For now, I'm giving you 3.5 out of 5 and that's very generous because I usually do not go over a 3 out of 5 for fully uh, artificial tanks. But really, good job. I can tell that you really care about your fish and you care about how your tank looks. If it looks good to you, who cares what I think, right? WTF. Decorating. Astonishing fish tank in bedroom ideas. Adorable. Dot dot dot. Let me tell you something. Astonishing is is definitely a word I would use for this. I, I am astonished. Even more astonished that it's in the bedroom. Also, how old is that TV hanging from the ceiling? That TV is the thickest thing I've seen. Straight out of 2003. And so is the car. And what is happening in the car? There's definitely fish in there. I commend them for sealing this car watertight, but it feels like it's just filled with massive gravel, and the gravel just kind of forms a mountain. There's not too much room for the fish to swim in. I wonder what's up with that. Couldn't you have allowed for more room for the fish? It might have actually been really cool, but all I see really is gravel, and there's maybe like two goldfish in there. And how did you get a car into your bedroom? And why do you want this in your bedroom? I have so many questions. Fish tank room. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for your ride? <laughs> Open these fish up. Welcome to the goldfish roller coaster. Oh, oh I just. <laughs> oh, oh, I just. Oh, dun, 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 I don't know. Oh my god. View. These are some small tanks. And what the F? Okay, watching it again. Uh, is that supposed to be uh, an accident? Hmm, and he had the camera rolling for it. That's a coincidence. Imagine smashing your fish on the ground and it's probably dead just for a TikTok video. Suddenly those stupid dances on TikTok aren't as stupid anymore because at least they're not hurting anyone except for their eyes, but you can bet that that fish is hurt. Uh, very physically destroyed, I would say. Damn, man, what's wrong with TikTok? Seen on Instagram with the caption, I am a fish out of water without you. First of all, it's not out of the water. The fish is still in the water, but all you've done is put it in a rusted light bulb. Second of all, what a beautiful guppy. I'm not one to still be on the guppy keeping phase of my hobby. I know some people never move on from that and that's totally fine. There are guppy experts who are super awesome at breeding all sorts of different and cool morphs. And this is a pretty darn legit cool morph. One of those leopard sunset morphs, I'm guessing. But honestly, if you're going to do something like this, at least put a caption that makes more sense. The fish is still in the water. I'm not saying take it out of the water. I'm saying maybe just don't use uh, fish to put in really dodgy conditions just for a photo. I'm sure the fish was put back into the tank. There's no way they're just keeping it in that light bulb. But again, they're kind of suggesting that this might be okay. Like I've seen people use smaller containments and put the fish into keychains. So this isn't that much of a stretch. Why not just take a picture of the fish in the tank. Nice try being romantic. Happy Valentine's Day, bro. I can almost smell it through the phone screen. Ugh, not as bad as the one that I could smell from the last FTR, but still pretty darn bad. What kind of fish are those? I feel like they're like baby tilapia or some sort of minnow, maybe goldfish. They're trying to start an aquaponic system. This is not the way. Honestly, that'll smell so bad and it's super bad for the fish. You can get a much more sustainable aquaponic system than this. When I think aquaponics, I kind of imagine a balance, a very healthy balance between what's in the water producing the ammonia and nitrates and the fertilizers and what's on top of the green lush plants that are taking in those nutrients. Not like this extreme forced sort of version of aquaponics where 
you just have the dirtiest conditions so that there will always be nutrient uptake for the plants available. That's super unsustainable. You get a lot of fish death. But I guess in this case, if the fish dies, that'll be even more nutrients. Uh, however bad it smells, the owner clearly doesn't care. It's just so annoying. It's one of my pet peeves. Like aquaponics just can be anything, including this crap. Koi fish, like new. Okay, starting off really bad here. Unless it's a toy koi fish, it's never good to see like new beside some kind of live animal. That's what you say for like an iPad. <laughs> hey Facebook, I stumbled across this koi fish recently. It's not stolen. Definitely not from Olympia Orthopedics. It's not stolen. Why would you give the place? It's like a thief who's like, so I, I just stole from um, here. Um, I mean, I didn't. If you want to take a look at it, I'm holding it in my grandpa's place. Great, now your grandpa is an accomplice. Are you happy? Some retired poor man, and, and now the police are looking for him. PM me. Koi fish, like new, a hundred bucks. Very, very flexible on the price. It's just so confusing. Also, I thought you couldn't sell any live animals on Facebook Marketplace anymore. This tank is sent in by Billy Hemingway. This caught my attention because of the rock formation on the bottom. Those rocks look like they were just picked up from a local source, so probably just free. And I like that. You don't have to spend a whole lot of money for your aquascape. You can pick stuff up here and there as long as you know your bylaws. You don't want to be breaking rules like that koi dude. All sorts of plants scattered around the background. This is really nice because it only has one betta and it's using that little coconut wood shell. It's just smugly in there just being really cute. That's probably its favorite place in this whole tank. And I love it when a fish has a favorite place, you know, you kind of know where they're going to be hanging out. But it has this whole tank to itself. It looks very clean. Also looks like very minimal flow. Really good for a betta. 4.4 out of 5. Good job and keep it up. So overstocked. Poor fishes. Yep, I've learned way better for saltwater tanks. I was questioning the other FTR uh, last week, like what's wrong with this saltwater tank? And then you guys were like, tanks need way more room to swim, dude. And in this tank, there's not just tangs, but angels. There's a clownfish. I'm sure this is overstocked to death. Great looking uh, rimless tank with like, you know, all the fixins for a saltwater tank, I'm assuming, but yeah, the problem is overstock. And what would you guys say is the number one like sort of problem with overstocking? Or are there many different problems together? It's like aggression levels, uh, overworking the protein skimmer, whatever that is. I don't know, I'm fresh water. I'm too fresh to understand. Um, lack of oxygen, again, territorial issues, uh, like aggression, high nitrates, can't do that many water changes to combat it. Is that kind of... Am I right? I'm trying to learn more salt water if you couldn't tell. This tank is sent in by Brendan Da Costa. This tank has a bit of an atmospheric feel to it. Uh, one thing right off the bat though, please fill your water level up a little bit more. This way it decreases the impact of the water and gives more room for your betta to swim in. Don't worry about them jumping out because you have a lid. My favorite part of this tank, I think I have two favorite parts. Actually three, the substrate, the dark color, gives it more atmospheric look to it. The beta looks very healthy and aesthetic. Look at that display right there. And the third thing that I really like is the uh, hydrocaudal plant in the middle with that wood piece in the back a little bit. I don't quite enjoy the plastic plants in the corner there. I don't really know what's going on with that barrel thing, but you have a really good start here and you're treating your betta very well. So good job to you. 3.8 out of 5. Keep it up. This next tank is sent in by Campbell Harley. They think that this tank of theirs is a crappy tank. And actually, I don't think it's crappy at all. It looks really great. Uh, you have a full carpet and it's growing around this rock path, which I think is neat. You have a really big opening area and you have background Rotala indica maybe, Rotala rotandifolia, and then this wood that juts out of the water, which is super cool, and some Anubius nana, and it's very understocked. I don't know what to not like about this tank. It even has that sort of wild feel to it that I really like. Maybe the filter could be hidden a little bit better, but I'm giving this a high rating and I don't think you expected it. 4.5 out of 5. Good job, keep it up. Don't think your tank looks bad because it doesn't. Oh my... Uh, fish tank and placo need gone ASAP. At least it's not need gorn ASAP like some 
previous FTR episodes. $100 though? Also, you said there's a Pleco. Oh, I see it. I Yeah. It's getting big, it's getting there. But can I ask, why is the water level like an inch? There's still a fish in there. Apparently a placo, placo. That's just a sucky move. At least drain the water after someone decides to buy it and comes to pick it up. Don't drain the water way beforehand. This tank sent in by Ishikama. I've reviewed their stuff before, but here's an update. So they said the floating wood thing at the bottom, uh, that scape didn't really work out. And now there's a lot of plants. Right now, it reminds me of this like plant grow out tank for a submerged garden sort of feel so you're growing a bunch of different plants maybe to sell or maybe to just populate another tank with but I feel like if we wait on this and the plants uh, fill out the tank it's gonna look really really nice for now I can't really accurately give you a review or rating but I'm going to give you an arbitrary four out of five good job three goldfish in a column that one's gone I think and then there's a bunch of schooling fish in the middle whatever that is goodness what is what is this? You know what, this looks worse than like a supermarket's fish tank that's got all the edible fish popularly eaten by people. I'd rather put fish in those tanks than this one. And what is that? I don't even care actually. <laughs> let's, let's just move on. R.I.P. Dory. R.I.P. Dory 2020 to 2020. Um, wait a second. 2020 hasn't been that long. Looks like an insect container and they just put barbed gravel and threw the fish in. That's all they did. And the insult cherry on top of the insult cake named the fish Dory. It's not a blue tang. I'm not saltwater. I know what a blue tang looks like. Nice try, buddy. Millie Klimis uh, sent in this fish tank. Not really a fish tank. There's an axolotl tank. Lately, we've been seeing some bad axolotl tanks, but I think this one's good. You guys can correct me if you want, but I think it's good. There's a lot of uh, surface area provided for this one axolotl, as in there's a lot of swimming places. There's a lot of places to walk. It's not really jumbled. It's substrateless, which means uh, the axolotl can't accidentally ingest some sort of cobble. And it's a species only tank, so only the axolotl with no uh, companions. None of that BS, because I know that you guys have told me that axolotls shouldn't be with other living creatures. Makes total sense. So this little creature is very spoiled. Although everything's artificial, um, I'd rather have this than, you know, trying to do something too, like, complicated for the axolotl to live in and then have it get sick or not be as happy. This looks like a perfectly good, clean tank for an axolotl. Unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to give this a rating um, because it's just not fair. But you're doing great. You're treating your pet very well. Keep it up. This fish tank is sent in by Oscar Lundberg. Pretty darn good little beta tank. I don't see anything wrong with it. You got an oco stone for hardscape. It matches kind of the substrate feel. Looks pretty natural. You got some nice tall plants to fill up the vertical section of the tank, which is always needed. Keeping it clean with that scrubber. Feels like you just scrubbed the tank. Nice blue little beta looking healthy and adventurous. Nice light up top. Even got some floaters started. It's gonna probably fill out your tank a bit more, give it that atmospheric feel, and also keep those nitrates at bay. Hey, really good job. 4.4 out of 5 for now. Used as party decorations. I will never understand why. And the, the, the bottles now are just water, so... I hope it's water. Let's let's hope that's water. Well, good on you for taking a picture of this, um, even though this is probably your friend's house you're having a party with. Hope you guys had a long chat about this and hopefully you did some fish rescuing. A nice rimless tank, but five goldfish and bare bottom, why? Now I'll have to say uh, bare bottom goldfish tanks, I F with that, I approve. I think they're just healthier and easier for goldfish to live in bare bottom tanks. But this tank is clearly not for goldfish. This tank is way too small and it would do so well planted with some tropical fish, some ember tetra species tank. Oh, there's a cat. I didn't even notice there's a cat. Nope, wouldn't recommend. I think the tail is in the water. Nature.planet. And dot all of us. I would never expect someone with this Instagram title to keep goldfish in a rimless tank. Found at a friend's house. Gave him a heater and going to rescue tomorrow. Great, this sounds great. Um, but I have my concerns. That heater, it's barely in the water. Um, most, if not all, commercial heaters, you need to submerge at least 80% or else they're going to start overheating, crack, and just basically cook everything. Because they're not supposed to be in ambient air, they're supposed to actually be submerged in the water for it to not burn and crack and 
destroy everything. So I hope this worked out. It would have been very easy to fix this if you just fill the water a little higher. And also uh, on further note, if your friend's house isn't freezing, if it's even at 16 degrees Celsius, the heater is not the most crucial thing that you need to do, especially if you're rescuing the fish the next day. In this case, it's only introducing more risk to the situation. I know the person means well, but I'm just telling everyone else this is not the best example to follow. Don't worry about the heater. Don't worry about much. If the water does smell, do a quick water change, maybe a 50% water change. But of course, if the room is freezing, like it's 10 degrees Celsius, then yeah. Thank you to this dude for rescuing the fish. Well done. Just some tips for next time. Fish tank review. Ah! Psycho! Herbert's getting mad because shark swimming around. Hurry, hurry, no! no. Thank you. Since I called out some TikTok stuff, one of my patrons, Kai Jen, brought it to my attention that this is more widespread than I thought. There's an awful lot of fish abuse out there, and here are just some of the examples that she sent me. junior and we got in a fight and he was twice my size so he punched me and he choked me and threw me on the ground and it hurt my feelings so whenever he went to bed I put bleach in his fish tank and the next morning all of his fish were dead. I don't know what to say. The good news, here's the good news, I'll tell you that there is good news in all of this. The more major TikTok users are the ones that had more views those actually got taken down by TikTok. Now, TikTok does crack down on things that um, are contrary to its uh, terms of use, but they prioritize some things more than others. And they prioritize a lot of everything else over animal abuse, or so it seems. So a video has to be substantially more for them to recognize that, yeah, we need to take this down. Uh, we need some action on this. So my call to everyone watching, please keep an eye out on TikTok users that are potentially abusing fish and trying to get more views from it. If you report that small channel, even if it only had like 50 views, I don't really know how TikTok works, never really been on TikTok, but even if it has something small like 25 views, if you're one of the people who actually reports that video, I'm sure it'll stack up, okay? If 25 saw that video and all 25 of them reported, I'm pretty sure that would somehow prioritize that video to be you know, screened, if their screening mechanisms are anywhere good. 100% of the people who watched that video reported it. That should tell the system something. So this is a call to action from me. Let's do this. Let's get something done about animal abuse on TikTok. Thanks again, Kaijen. This message would not be put out there if not for you. WTF. All right, another Paul Cafaro call out. Y'all are not gonna like this, or the few of you under 10 years old are not gonna like this. So every time I call out Paul Cafaro, even if I don't say anything like two videos ago, there will still be diehard Paul Cafaro fans uh, very offended. Now, how is it that they're offended if I showed clips of him but I didn't say anything. Doesn't that just mean that he's doing something bad? That people need to get defensive and feel like they need to defend his actions? Yes, yes it does just mean that. That was a rhetorical question. Now, crazy triple overflow beta tank setup, big news. Imagine just going on with your life looking for places to put a fish. I, I don't have that sort of creative spark, you know, I, I'm just not like these people. I, I could never have thought of that. This tank is sent in by Asad D. Beautiful little guppies swimming all about. My favorite part of this tank is the rock work and also the 
plants that are planted and attached all around. Is this a newly set up tank perhaps? Uh, just be careful, make sure you cycle it through. Four out of five, keep it up. How could I resist such a deal? <laughs> $550 for the kalest smoothie that I've ever seen. Fish tank with all accessories and fish. Do you want some fish tank on the side of your algae, sir? This tank is sent in by Daivat Show Dairy. Sorry if I butchered that name. Nice little planted tank here. Once again, I do enjoy the rock and wood hardscape together. I think that's a really good and powerful combination. Four out of five. This tank is sent in by Senja Cruz. Right away, I noticed the pink hue. Not sure what that's all about. Makes the tank look artificial. There are live plants in here, but it's really hard to tell that they're live plants because the pink light makes them look, again, artificial. A 3.75 out of five. Craigslist ads never stop. Yeah, the only thing that's going to stop are the lives of those fish. Have you ever seen a good fish tank on Craigslist? Is it really that hard to just put some rocks and then put some water and then put some fish into a fish tank properly? This fish tank is in my Carla Cozina from Croatia. Very cool. And very cool fish tank as well. I love this clean box look. Very rigid, very clean, no BS fish tank. The camera is a little far away, unfortunately. I can't see the specifics of the tank, but from here I can already tell there is a nice hardscape. 4.4 out of 5. Good job. This tank is sent in by Mac. Really cool, interesting sort of process in um, the evolution of his or her tank. In December of 2018, the tank was filled to the brim with live plants, even got a carpet going. Going, but then there's this artificial motorcycle. It looks cool if you're really into motorcycles, I guess, but not my thing. Uh, if you replaced it with a nice piece of dragon oko stone, <laughs> just that's the answer to life. Are you sad? Oko stone. You missed breakfast? Oko stone. Your girlfriend broke up with you? Oko stone, bro. You got kidney stones? Hey, uh, better hope it's not oko stone. <laughs> Bruh, isn't this better fish abuse? New York City School's official website. Not the pineapple. You've ruined fish keeping and SpongeBob at the same time. Oh, uh, how could this be? This fish tank is sent in by Marcus Ortega. Oh, crazy textures, nice black background. You got good lines with the hardscape. I can't get over that crypt. 4.6 out of five, keep it up. Apparently this is the greatest tank she's ever owned. Ma'am, that's animal abuse. That's an axolotl. No, 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 you don't mess with the axolotl, dude. This is totally wrong. Not enough surface area to swim or to walk around in the bottom. There are other fish with it and it's overstocked to hell. This tank is so small. The gravel size is probably a perfect size for the axolotl to choke on. No, 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 not doing this today. Nope. This fish tank is sent in by Samarth Kedilaya. Nice, cozy, warm look. Very warm lighting here. Maybe a little too warm for my taste. I like it a little cooler than this. It does tend to show color well more if you go cooler. Not sure what that fish is. Reminds me of an epistogramma, super red, something like that. Could be a killifish, not sure. But anyway, stocking's very light. Mosses attached everywhere, that's great. Got some good, solid hardscape going on. For now though, a four out of five. Good job, keep it up. For only $4.99, you can have your own goldfish concentration camp. Oh no. It's, it's a garden raised window half moon pool kit. That's a mouthful. Hopefully it's a gigantic enclosure because it could actually work. Um, it doesn't look too bad. And if it's actually like a, like a sizable tank and you don't put too many goldfish or koi in there that will overstock it, then I don't really see a problem but chances are it's probably too small and people are gonna put fish that are too big for it. Fish tank review. Big water slide. Scoop those things up, get them out of there. Oh my God, what is that? Zombie. Fly, oh my God. You. What started off as a covalescent home turned into a permanent betta pond. Although the subreddit is r betta fish, um, I found this in r aquariums, but honestly, I don't really think this is a crappy tank. This has got to be at least five gallons, which is the acceptable minimum uh, worldwide for bettas. Maybe not in Europe. I think they do things a little better in Europe for betta fish. But anyways, this is not bad at all. There's a filter. It looks like it's running pretty good. Uh, not too fast of a flow, not too slow, just enough for the betta to 
you know, handle. There's even live plants in there. There's a little bed of log for it to hang out in. The water looks clean. This is really what I recommend people when they're like, hey, I gotta rescue a fish tomorrow and I don't have a tank or like, hey, I wanna upgrade my tank, but I have no money because I'm 12 years old. I always tell them, do you have any Tupperware containers containing like used clothes or items that you don't really need in the house? You can always clean that up, make sure it's a non-toxic material and then just transport your fish in it. It is a very, very cheap way to get a fish tank started and provide so much room for your fish versus like a 1.5 gallon crappy little tank. This is a much better option. Great. The owner is just watching this happen, just watching all the fish get stressed. Those fish don't look cheap at all and that tank does not look cheap either. Like I said in the last video when I featured that photo of this tank, it's got such a clean look, rimless, it would be amazing as a planted tank. Instead, you put oversized Ryukin, I think, goldfish in there and then just watch as your cat stresses them out. That makes no sense. Whoa, that is pretty cool. You can definitely tell they're predatory because they follow such a fast moving object really well and almost like just instinctually, automatically, they don't even think about that. They see a fast moving object, they're like, oh, that's food, I'm gonna follow it. Just like a cat. This tank is sent in by Chloe K. A nice, long, beautiful planted tank uh, showcasing a fish that I'm not really aware of. It's called the Dormitator Maculatus, or also known as the Fat Sleeper. And here's a better picture close up of the Fat Sleepers. They sure are chunky. And they're wild caught, so that's extra cool. They look like marvelous pets. They also look like something that would be invasive in the wild. So I guess you're doing a good job by removing them from the habitat they're not supposed to be in. The tank itself is nice. Could use more scape upwards so you can use bigger plants like big Amazon swords, but I gotta give it to you the unique stocking choice. Never seen fast sleepers in a fish tank before. Really cool, 4.2 out of 5. Hopping good design, spacious bowl design, half gallon capacity. Oh man, hopping good design. Wait, how is it out of stock. I hope they only made like one and then it got sold because that's what I think is plausible in this situation. I Why would anyone, how in the world is something like this out of stock? Doesn't seem to mind. So then what? Is he gonna tell you he wants a bigger tank? This makes me so sad. All right, now I know what that means. Doesn't seem to mind. Very neat product. I love this concept. It works very well. The fish yang part? Seems a bit small once the plant is submerged in the water, but our little fish doesn't seem to mind the right quarters. Okay. Didn't know you talk fish, Danielle. You know, Danielle, you should give more room to your fish. Very understocked. Tutiki pay means uh, everything, it, it comes with everything for $175. And yeah, it, it, I feel like it does come with everything. It comes with all the fish in the world. It seems like every single fish is in that fish tank. Next tank sent in by Jelmer Cool, and what a cool last name, first of all. Also, what a darn cool planted tank this is. The discus look absolutely gorgeous, and then the giant vallis with the two separate islands of plants. I see Anubias, I see Hygrophila. Lots of green, great textures big tank and aquascape to perfection, I would say. Haven't given out a five out of five in a while. I'm giving this a five out of five. Jomer, keep it up. I have no suggestions for you. You should teach me how to aquascape. Jesse Phillips sent in this tank of his one pea puffer. Really cute, really nice. I like the log and then you planted all around that. I see some crypts. I see some nice moss. This is a very cozy looking tank. Perfect for one pea puffer. I hope you're feeding them really good frozen blood worms and sometimes live food and maybe the snail. Now Aquarium Co-op did confirm that pea puffers do not need snails to grind down their teeth because they are the only known species in this hobby of freshwater puffer that does not need to grind down their teeth. 4.1 out of 5. Keep it up. Plies Emil Weiberg, hope I said that right, sent this tank in. Got some angels, garamis, some light bearers. I hope they will grow up and tolerate each other. I'm not sure if this tank is necessarily big enough when they are full sized. Got some Hygrophila polysperma and some Rotala or Ludwigia, I'm not sure. The Anubias in the front looks a little bit dirty. It's being overtaken by brown algae. Always not a good sign. They also look like the rhizomes are planted into the substrate, which 
you never want to do with a Nubia. So definitely try to take that out as soon as possible. For now, I'm giving this tank a 3.7 out of 5. This next beast of a tank is sent in by Christian Apostolowski. Again, my bad if I said it wrong. The textures are wild. You got a long carpet of Dwarf Sag. You got some Valis. You even got Hornwort in the very corner. Don't think I didn't see that. Big old tank of green. But I do want to see some red tones perhaps. Maybe just a little bit of hardscape would help. 4.8 out of 5 though. This is no joke. All right, Max Adams, you sent in this tank and it looks pretty good. I have my doubts if all the plants are real though. That Anubius definitely looks a little funky. There's a cluster of what looks like Salvinia floating up top. Java Fern and the other piece of Anubius and the moss looks real enough. I think that's 88 aqua soil, so very nutritious substrate. Not sure if I'm digging the Cholia wood uh, hardscape. It's a good start, uh, clean looking rimless tank with some live plants in it and it's very under stock for now so 3.85 out of 5. Poor Tom and Jerry. Is that what those two fish are called? They look so sad. And before I need to say anything I scroll down to the comments and they said everything for me. They can't do any other thing than just exist. That's all I do so I know their pain. <laughs> Same. The aquarium that sits on the bottom level of the recreated former home of Ho Chi Minh at the Zone 5 Military Museum, Da Nang, Vietnam. That was a mouthful and very way too specific, I, okay? The goldfish looks like it's going through PTSD from the Vietnam War. How, how, how does a fish just die? I literally saw it swimming and then it was done in half a millisecond. I scroll down to the comments for some investigation. Some people were saying that it wasn't water, so maybe it was like vodka or maybe it was some sort of soap or bleach. Some people said there was too much of a shock. Maybe the water was too different in temperature, something was super cold or way too hot. Either way, uh, I feel so bad for that fish. Can you imagine just existing and, and the air around you is just poison and then you die immediately. This is literally crappy aquariums. I confirmed that there's no fish in that tank, thank goodness, because that water is definitely filled with a whole bunch of fecal coliforms. Because you know every time you flush after a poop, the molecules all float in the air and then get on surfaces. And in this case, into the water of that tank is where it all collects. I don't know what to say, there's a lot wrong here. All right. <clears throat> My goatees just love each other. I know some think goldfish shouldn't be with angels and others, but they are perfectly at peace waiting for their new tank to cycle. This tank doesn't look like it's cycled, my dude. So ironic that there's a skull on the bottom because that's what your fish are going to look like in two weeks. I'm glad they're together though. I guess they have a friend to go to heaven with. How romantic indeed. I don't even have anything funny to say. This is just straight up sad. Better fight to death. Don't miss last two minutes. And the channel is called Beta Fish Fight. 381 subscribers. I cannot. Thanks for visibly giving the thumbs down. 5.1k thumbs down versus 612 thumbs up, which is a good ratio, but that's still 612 people who liked this video. Homies, if you have the time, go report that video. Let's take it down. And thank you for staying till the last two minutes of my video. Fish tank root. Let's do this for. Chicks out like butter. You, you'll want to get it though. Really just coming up with places, any place for a fish tank. I don't know how I can make my collarbones like pop a little more. Don't want to give too much skin there, whoa, whoa. But to like look at the human body and go like, hey, I think I can put some fish in there. I think that could be enough for a fish tank. Might even be too much room for a fish tank. <laughs> Looks like five guppies in there. And then there's a red-eared slider turtle for no apparent reason. This meme is sent to me by Skapeep from Discord. Very accurate. So I'm the boyfriend and I'm very clearly distracted by the dragon oko stone. I turn around and check it out and then every other stone in this aquascaping hobby is like, you know, nah.
Very accurate, I love this meme. It's just subtle enough to like not be one of those crazy far out memes. Five out of five meme, dude. Wow, look at us, we're actually becoming meme review. <laughs> My friend sent me a picture of her tank today. I was shocked to say the least. Four beautiful fish all crammed in a tiny tank truly makes me want to cry looking at it. I offered to look after them, them, at least until they upgrade, but no. Holy heck -erinos. The face on that fish is like, a tortured sort of sadness. Like if you looked up the word tortured or like disappointed in the dictionary, it would have that face beside it. Man, get your stuff together. My friend's beta tank I offered to clean. Ah, yes. Are you ready, kids? Aye, aye, Captain. Okay, now, die. You know what I hope? I hope that uh, they said yes and you did clean it. Uh, clean it. You actually um, threw everything out. <laughs> and put the fish in a five gallon. <laughs> People on Facebook just don't understand. Okay, I'm weary of these blanket statements. There are definitely people on Facebook who do understand. I'm not in a Facebook group, so I'm not even being defensive here. I'm just trying to defend innocent people who, you know, get caught up in this generalization. But holy heck, those are big chonkers. And they actually look healthy as well, but imagine how good it would be if they were in like a garden pond outside that was actually big enough to contain all of them in a natural and healthy way. And that's a beautiful tank. Imagine how good it would be if it was like all planted, super nice Wallstad tank. Jeez, man, if you just remove the goldfish, the goldfish would win and this tank would win separately. You'd have two wins, win-win situation. Danny Metzger sent in this fish tank. Very big, uh, filled with some Grammys. My favorite part of this tank is that big bush of Anubias. A little bear to the right. If you're gonna make it bare, you're gonna have to go a little more heavy on the left side and maybe even go in past the 50% point towards the right as well. Of course, my right and my left. For now though, a solid four out of five, really good job. You would think a company that sells aquarium supplies on Amazon would know better. So judging by the uh, title of this picture, this is probably an advertisement to sell aquarium supplies on Amazon and that's the picture they came up with. If that's the case, that's ridiculous. Those little toys that are supposed to be decorations are meant to be in glowfish tanks. I know this because I worked at PetSmart and they're horrible. Never get those. They're so bad and artificial. And then there's one goldfish, which is the last fish you want in this tank. This is definitely some company that don't even like care at all about aquariums and just wants to make money and has seen a sort of niche that wasn't you know, filled to the brim, not saturated enough on Amazon, so they just got the supply and put a random old picture up. This tank is sent in by Ellie May. Now this picture is a little tough for me because I, it doesn't seem like you encompass the whole tank. It's also a little far away, but you know what? Not everyone's a photographer, so whatever. My favorite part of this tank is definitely that wood piece towards my right. The lines are amazing coming out of it. That's really cool. That's a very lucky piece to have. I think more plants would definitely do. Um, I don't know about that face, TDH. For now, a 3.8 out of five, keep it up. This tank is sent in by Gretchen Chen. Right off the bat, you know what I have to say about your substrate. Got little fruity pebbles scattered about. Not the most enjoyable to me, but if it is to you and it makes you happy, dude, don't change it, you're doing great. You got some nice wood in there, you have some live plants, great job. From an aquascaping and a personal standpoint, just from my opinion, I am rating this tank a 3.5 out of 5. If you want to know how to improve based on my standards, check out videos from George Farmer, from uh, Green Aqua, from PDU Aquascaping, from my own channel a little bit. Totally up to you. My cousin's abomination. I tried to tell him how terrible this was, but he doesn't agree. He really should freaking darn agree. That iridescent shark is more than half the length of this fish tank. How does it even turn around? It's probably got really good backing up skills because that's all it's able to do. Two Oscars in there and one Pleco, of course, to clean the tank, right? This tank is ended by Josh Lark. Actually, two two things right off the bat that I really like. The first one is that path with the dimension of the slope going up. It's like the tank is leading somewhere. It doesn't just end when we reach the glass. The second favorite thing, equally favorite, are the wood pieces. They're so solid and big and they go all the way up, probably past the water as well. So this is like, it's got like a little land feature. Change my mind, there's three things that are equally favorite of mine. The hardscape after the wood, 
which is the rockscape. Wow, we, and then the plants planted all throughout. It's all very, very meticulous. I was going to give this a 4.8, 4.9 out of 5, but I, after consideration, I couldn't really come down at it with a solid, like, if you did this, it would be 5 out of 5. So, 5 out of 5, dude. Next tank is sent in by Keanu Lewis, not Keanu Reeves. Keanu Lewis is working it. This is a new tank, new scape. You already know what my favorite part of this tank is, the Oco Stone formation. Oh, the textures of the Oco Stone, I just can't get over how good that looks. Not sure about the skull, but it's not completely out of place, just a bit out of place for me. I like that it's mossed up. I think it could be planted a little bit better, maybe a little bit more lush. The Java ferns do look a little messy right now. They haven't grown in, which is understandable because it's a new scape. Nice bright substrate. Make sure you don't leave the lights on for too long. It's going to start growing algae and taking over slow growing Java fern. Overall, pretty good tank. Just a little bit more depth needed and a little bit more hardscaping and finessing. For now, a 4.3 out of 5. Good job. Found this on Marketplace. Man, I've seen small tanks, but this thing is so tiny. They ex it seems like it, they just expect that this is the permanent home for the beta. And the beta itself is more than a quarter filling the tank. It even has that effect that it's small because it's like a Lego piece. And Lego is small. I don't know what's going on here. Don't buy this stuff. Stay far away. Remco from the Netherlands. Much love to the Netherlands. I got lots of Netherlands people watching me. I don't know why my videos are getting over there, but I love it. And you guys all got some pretty nice looking tanks like this one from Remco. Beautiful, unique scape using the Fluvo edge. Five gallon, six gallon. Clean scape, very understocked. Anubius, I'm digging it. The substrate is my favorite part, that little accent. My least favorite part, can you guys guess? Probably. To my right, there is something. I don't know what it is. Looks like it doesn't belong there. And sorry to say, it's going to take your score down a little bit. Giving it a 4.2 out of 5. Keep it up. Beta tank at my friend's house, SMH. Just work with the the amount of water a beta gets typically and, and you know, make it as much like a jail cell as you can. Just really go for that prisoner feel. Nothing better to come home and, and see your fish in a jail cell. It really makes you feel powerful, doesn't it, to imprison an innocent animal who can't fend for itself. My boyfriend's stepsister's fish tank. On top of all the glaring tank issues, the poor fish has some kind of infection in both of its eyes. Of course it does. Its tank looks like that. I would have many eye diseases if my home looked like that. My little cousin's better tank. <laughs> Maybe add some water to it. It's very easy and it doesn't take too long. Make sure it's dechlorinated. I don't know, it looks like there's a tank right beside this water bottle. You had to deliberately fill it up to that little. Have you have you tried filling up something and making sure that it doesn't go above a certain height? It actually takes more work to overfill it than to leave it at a smaller amount. And don't forget to get your hands wet. Tetra, 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 we in a spot coming in hot. Ventral fin die, acclimate that. With my shoal at, cure my fin rot from Karas of Formies to Peretra Hold on, hold on. There's not another fish that you can wish for. Live fam says, I finna one, I finna gone. Three days without fur, I'm an addict, like fanatic. I'm a baddest, no tabs, only dirt. My Cory gang so loyal, black tetra go skirt. We came to play, came to silence, gang.